Okay, so what we'll do is we'll get started now. Okay, so we're going to start with introducing the bank payments and receipts window. We're going to discuss group transactions, memorize and recall, and recurring items. You will only have access to memorize, recall, and recurring items if you are on the Stage 50 Accounts Professional variant. I will also be including some demonstration within the software, which will then bring us back to the slides to summarize the session. Please do keep your questions coming throughout the session, just so either me or my colleague can pick these up for you. Well, let's go in with the introduction to bank payments and receipts. So posting bank transactions is a quick and easy way to record money going in and out of your bank account within the software. So you've got a BBBP transaction, which is bank payment, and that's money going out of your account. You've then got a bank receipt, that's money coming into the account. So you could think of it as BR as being money received into the account. You might be wondering why you would post a bank payment or receipt. So it might be that you have a one-off customer or supplier that doesn't record need a record creating in Sage, but you still want to record the transaction in the software. It might also be if you have transactions that happen frequently within with the same information, the memorize and recall options save you time by allowing you to save the details you've entered and allowing you to recall them again to use in the future. And that saves you having to manually type it in all again every time. But again, a reminder that this option is only available in the Sage 50 Accounts Professional. And lastly, you can also group bank transactions to make it easier to analyse and reconcile your bank transactions. You can group transactions within bank activity and bank reconciliation window. You find this by going to settings along the top, into bank defaults, and then you'll see two checkboxes, one for group bank transactions, and group items within Bankrec. This is a, not a retrospective change. So if the checkbox was clear before posting the transactions, they will not be grouped when the box is selected. Same if transactions are grouped using this option, clearing this box does not ungroup them. And to get grouped transactions, they have to be entered within the same batch entry window and have the same date and reference. What we'll do now is we're just going to move on to some demonstration there. So this is what I'm going to be covering in today's session. So we're going to look within the bank payment and receipt window. We're going to talk about where the default tax code pulls from, how to memorize transactions and recall them, and then also briefing again about the grouped bank transactions. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pop over to my software and we'll have a look at what that looks like. OK, so if we're in the software now, we're just going to go into bank accounts down the left hand side. And you can see I've got my list of bank accounts within the software. So we're going to do bank payment first. So my screen's a little bit smaller in terms of resolution. So my menu is slightly more condensed. So my bank payments option is within this menu here where it says payments. You might see your bank payment option that shows along the top if you've got a bigger screen than I do. So I'm going to go into payments and I'm going to go into bank payment here. So in here, you've got your, your options along the top. You can see anything with an asterisk. That means that it's a mandatory field that must be filled out within this window. If it doesn't, then it is optional. So my first one is bank. So I'm just going to leave mine selected as 1200. It's automatically populated today's date, which is the 30th of May. I'm just going to put my reference in here. So mine's going to be rent. You've got your extra reference as well, which is optional. You've got your nominal code which you can either manually type it in. If you know what it is, you can click the drop down. And with version 29, you now have the option that you can search within your nominal codes as well. So I'm just going to search for my 7100 and search. And I've got a nominal code for rent. So if I just click OK, 
and that's popped that in for me. I've got my department, I'm going to choose my drop down and I'm just going to choose mine for purchasing. Just leave that as it is. You've got project reference and cost code in here as well. So that's only required if you use projects. I'm not using that at the moment, so I'm going to leave mine blank. And I'm just going to put the same reference in again. I'm just going to put rent in there. We've then got the net column. So in here, I'm going to just put in, let's just say it's 3,000. It's automatically populated my tax code. So as I mentioned earlier, we're going to talk about the default tax codes and where it pulls from. So this is pulling from what I've got set up in supplier defaults within the settings menu. But this can be overwritten if needs be. So you can see here it's automatically calculated my tax according to my tax code. And we now in version 29 have a gross column. So that's a new feature to version 29. And what it does is it calculates what you've put in your net and what the tax is calculated and it adds them both together for you. So then it no, you no longer have to manually add that up. You can see that straight away. Now this box can't be overwritten. You can't click into it. You can't change it. If it is incorrect in the gross column, that means you'll either have to amend your net column or it could be the incorrect tax code that's calculating your tax. You do also have some shortcut key, keyboard shortcuts along the top, but you can also click on these as well. So it might be that I want to insert another line in here. So let's just say I want to copy the cell above, so I want it to come from the same bank. So I can either press F6 on my keyboard or I can press this button here and it's going to copy the cell above. So I'm going to have, I'm happy with the date. So I'm going to copy that one too. It's just let me know that's outside my financial, financial year. I'm just going to click OK on there. And let's just say that I want to put in here my water bill. So I'll just put that in there. My nominal code, I want to put in here. I'm just going to search for that. Let's just say. 7102. That's for my water rates. Click OK. Let's pop that in for me. And then let's just say water bill in there as well. And we'll just put, let's just say £50. You've also got the option as well. Could be that you're working from a list and you, you want to make sure that the items that you're putting in here are in the same correlation as the list that you're working from. So it might be that you've missed a line out, but you want to put it in between. So you can actually press on this one here, and it's going to insert a row in between those two for me. So it might be that I've missed one out. If you want to delete a row, you've got F8, or you can press this button here, and it's going to delete it for me. You can also, as well, use this option where it copies the cell above. But then it plus it, it adds one. So you can see it's trying to go to 1201. I don't have a 1201 bank account. So that's why it's getting me to select one from the list. But if I was to then go copy cell above plus one, it's then going to take me to the next date. So you've got those options along the, along the top as well. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete that line there. And we're just going to save these two here. And that's a bank payment. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to close out of this window. I'm just going to briefly talk about the bank receipt. So I'm going to the bank receipt along the top. You can see this option here. Now bank receipt, the fields are exactly the same as we've just been looking at. So we've got the bank, the date, the reference, nominal codes, departments, projects. We don't have a cost code in this one, but again, if you're using projects, then you've got project reference, details, net and tax. Now for your tax, again, this is going to pull from your customer defaults. Again, if you wanted to change that within your customer defaults, you can go to settings along the top and then into customer defaults. But if you do change that within that setting, it is going to change it for all of your new customer records going forward. And same for suppliers. So if we were to close out of here, and I'll just show you that setting. We've got the settings along the top. You've got customer defaults and you've got supplier defaults. So let's just say if we were to go to customers, 
and you can see the standard tax code is for T21. So customer defaults is so when you create a new customer record, it's going to automatically have a T21 tax code and a default tax code of 4002. If you were to change that, it would then change when you were to, it would change for the bank receipt, but it would also change for any new customer record. So you've got to work out what's going to be worth it. Is it going to be worth it changing it for your bank receipts? Or is it going to be worth changing it for your customer records? But like I say, if you were, when you do a bank receipt, you can manually overwrite it and overtype it. And the same for your suppliers as well. So that is your default tax codes for your bank receipt and bank payment. The next thing I want to have a look at is the mem memorize, recall and recurring entries. So let's just say we go back to bank payment. And let's just say we want to memorize the rent and the water bill that I just typed in before. So let's just go back and put those back in again. So we're going to leave them as they are. And we're just going to look for the nominal code 7100. Going to leave it as department two. I'm just going to put that back in. So it was £3,000. And there. We'll do the water bill as well. Now, so I've put that information in. You can have more lines in than what I've just put in. It doesn't have to just be one. Once you're happy with what you've typed in, you are just going to memorize. And let's just say we've got a rent and water bill one again now already. Let's just and let's just click save. You can see it saves it as GT file. You click save. Then if we were to close out of that and not save it, and I go back into that window, and go bank payment again, I click recall, and I click rent and water. And click open you can see it brings those transactions through exactly how they were when i memorized it now it will remember the date at the time that you memorize it so you need to make sure that you'll be updating the date but if you do need to make any changes with any of these other fields you can also do that but it won't affect the original file that you memorized so you can come in so just say i memorized it but for this month my rent has went up by let's just say to three thousand five hundred so I can amend those fields if I need to. But again, that would just be that, that one off file. If you do need to, to memorize it with updates, then you would need to do a new one and re-memorize it as a new one. So that's how you memorize and recall. So if we just close out of that, the last one I want to talk about is the recurring items. So along the top here, you've got an option for recurring items. So for recurring items, this is the option. So this is where you would set up your recurring items. So this is so you can go in and process any recurring transactions that you might have. So you can see there's already some in here. So you've got rent, higher purchase, loan repayments, electricity, direct debits. Now I'm not going to go into detail within here. We do have a full session on our help centre on recurring items, how to process them, how to amend them and how to add them as well. So you can find that on our recordings page if you did want to check that out. And then lastly, one thing I just want to cover is to do with the grouped transactions. So within the software, you go into settings along the top and then you go into bank default. So you can see here, I've already got a tick here. You've got the group bank transactions. So again, as I mentioned earlier, if you do turn these options on, it's not going to automatically group transactions with the same date and reference. If you you haven't, if it if you've got transactions there, then you tick it. It will be only for transactions going forward. And same with if you to 
untick that, it wouldn't automatically ungroup them. It would just be for new transactions going forward. You do also have the option here to group items within Bankrec as well. If you wanted to turn that on, you just tick that option and click OK, and that saves it for you. What I'm going to do now is I am just going to pop back to my software because I've got some more information to go through. I can see Jane's there asking, um, what would it group? So it, it would book, it would group your bank transactions, so your bank payments or your bank receipts, and they, it would group them. If you've if it's got the same date and the same reference, it would consolidate all those transactions into one, and that's what you would see in your bank activity and your bank transactions. Okay, so. Just to summarise kind of what we've covered on this in this session. So bank payments and receipts record money going in and out of your bank account. Your default tax codes come from customer and supplier defaults but can be overwritten. If you've got Safe 50 Accounts Professional, you can use Memorize, Recall and Recurring Items option to save time on manual processing. And lastly, you can group your bank transactions to make it easier to reconcile your bank transactions within your bank reconciliation and the bank activity. Just a reminder, keep your questions coming through. Um, like I say, my, me and my colleague are here to answer those, so keep them coming through throughout the session. Just whilst we're any, any extra questions to come through, I just want to cover some upcoming webinars that are coming up the next couple of uh, in the next week or so. So coming up, these are the key topics that we have to cover. So tomorrow we have the VAT return on the 31st of May at 2 p.m. So that's to learn how to work through the wizard to reconcile and submit your VAT return online. And then we've also got VAT return, running reports and reconciling your VAT return. And that's at Thursday, the 1st of June at 11 o'clock. So you can learn which reports to run to reconcile your VAT figures prior to submission. We've also got bank reconciliation coming up this week. And so we have year end and company archive. We've also got correcting journals and we've got another quick learn next week on bank transfers as well. So that does bring us to the end of today's session. Please feel free to stay around for the next couple of minutes or so if you are waiting for a question to be answered or if you do have any outstanding questions for us. We will use this time up until half past to get any answers to your questions. But if you have got what you needed today and you want to leave the session, you will receive an email in around an hour or so with links to both our webinar schedule and today's recorded session for you to refer back to if needs be. As you leave the session, you will see a feedback form for the session. If you get the chance to fill it out, any feedback would be greatly appreciated. I have got a question coming through as well from Rebecca. Um, how do I find the article for memorize and recall option? So what I'll do is I'll just quickly show you how to find that, that article. So bear with me. So we'll just pop back to my software. And I'll show you. So what you can do, if you go to help along the top in your software, we go to help center. And it's brought up our little help center section here. 
If you just type in there, memorize and recall, You can see here in version 29, we have the new help feature. So it's gonna give us all the articles that we need. So you've got memorize and recall and recurring entries. So we just click on there. So we've got a summary, we've got a description and a solution. So you can find this article within here. It's also got a video you can watch on there as well. What I'm going to do now is just while we're waiting for any further questions coming through, please do get them in before we end the session at half past. But in the meantime, I'm just going to pop myself on mute just whilst we wait. I can see we've got a question coming through asking how we get registered as well. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly show you how to find those registration pages. So if you just go on your browser and you just type in sage.co.uk forward slash webinars. And we're just gonna select 50 accounts. You can see here, we've got the registration page. So you can see here, we've got the bank reconciliation tomorrow at 11 a.m. And we've got some other ones on here as well. If you have got any topics that you wanna to suggest for us to cover, if you scroll down to the very bottom of the registration page, we'll get all the way to the bottom of our plenty of topics that we're covering recently. And you can see here, you've got to suggest a new topic. If you do have any ideas for us to cover, definitely get those suggestions in for us as well. Okay, so majority of the questions seem to have been answered. So I'm gonna do as I am gonna wrap this session up. I want to say thank you to my colleague who's been on Jackie there to help with the questions today. I want to say thank you to all of you for your participation as well. Just a reminder, we have got the plenty of sessions as I showed you over the next couple of weeks, so don't be shy and get registered. So I want to say another thank you and take care.